Union City. I'd been away so long. Now I was back. And nothing in this city was what it seemed. Beyond the Steel Sky is a sequel to Beneath the Steel Sky. What we've done is to give it a comic book look because we felt that was really appropriate to the game. So we've used a thing called Toon Toy, which does toon rendering. It puts an edge onto rendered objects that looks like a hand-drawn ink line. And I think that's given the game a really modern look, a really different look, but in a funny way, a kind of a traditional comic book look. At the start of the project, I was looking at what technology. Originally, I had to look at various third-party cell shading renderers, but they didn't really offer the feature set that I needed in order to make this kind of the visual style that I had in mind and to emulate what Dave was doing in traditional comics. And the line rendering that we use is quite sophisticated. It's not just giving an outline to a character. It's also rendering, um, converting the various normal map details. So wherever there's a bump or there's a crevice, it will render a line uh, in real time. So we're not having to draw the lines in the texture maps. So everything is rendered in real time. I suppose my biggest involvement, the thing I spend the most time doing, is designing characters and designing backgrounds. If I'm designing a new character, I'll try and do 15, 20 different versions very quickly in the digital equivalent of pencil drawings and just send them out to everybody and then we'll home in on three or four that we like and then I'll do a, a more finished version which incorporates those and then we reach the design that everybody likes and then it goes off to the finishing artists who figure out all the exact details and then to the 3D artists who construct 3D models based on them. So it's a very fluid process and it's very fast feedback as well that I can do a couple of dozen drawings and I'll get feedback that same day. We kind of feed off each other. So I've got an idea of how to use the tech to get a given look and I'll bounce those ideas off Dave because he has much more of the traditional comic knowledge. Especially for characters, characters I tend to leave in Dave's core. He handles all of our character designs because that's what he's fantastic at doing. Whereas with the environmental design, he gives a couple of sketches and then we adapt those sketches and get the key shapes that he's thinking of and then build that detail around those key shapes. For me, getting a comic style, you need to have a person who's an expert in comics. Uh, he's got a rich source of knowledge in that area. I was never trained as an artist, I was trained as a building surveyor. So I know about structure and I've always tended to think in structural terms. I loved to play with Meccano when I was a kid, you know, I loved to construct things and my approach to drawing is kind of a structural way of doing it. And I think the thing that kind of characterises Beyond the Steel Sky is Within the city, we have different levels of comfort and luxury. And it was to try and differentiate those levels to go from something that's really elegant and cool and relaxing to something that's quite harsh and industrial. It's tremendous fun to come up with, with scenes and then populate them with believable figures. Is everyone feeling aspirational today? I think it'll be a really good game for newcomers, but we'll still have a lot of their uh, references to the old game as well, so fans of the original, there'll be enough detail in there to keep them happy. A lot of it gets inspired by the previous game, especially the artwork. So they'll get a good feel for the original and for newcomers, that they don't feel like they have to play the original in order to enjoy uh, Beyond. I think, uh, yeah, I think both sets of fans will be happy, I think. Faster! What the hell kept you?